All right, so here's a progress of what's happening. Um, for the longest time, I had the, I've had this lock sound programmer and also the ESU decoder tester in my drawer for the longest time. And I've been wanting to find a, an actual location where I can mount it <laughs> and uh, use it. So that's what I did. So I have this PC kind of uh, multi-plug going into a USB plug. Uh, running through here and then underneath the layout uh, what I ended up having to do was I had to take a layer of this plywood off so that way I can recess it so you can see it can just clear underneath there uh, it's working out it's really cool uh, then I took this piece of Bachman track that I've that I've had and I use it for uh, programming and this time I gave it a permanent home so I gave it uh, some hot glue put that down here and then I have it plugged into the ECOS over here as the programming track. Uh, what I'm gonna end up doing is uh, I'm gonna make some kind of switch so that way I can toggle between the, the ECOS and also for the ESU. Uh, and that's also gonna go for the um, US, uh, for the decoder as well, or sorry, for the decoder tester. All right, let's get underneath the layout and show you guys what I did. All right, a while back, I added this plug back here. Uh, for the Ethernet port, it also has two HDMI ports as well as one USB port. And then from there, I ran it up inside the wall up into that space to go up and through the roof. Around over here, as you can see right there. And then that goes to where my computer is supposed to be. Which reminds me, um, yeah, so one of the reasons why I've been kind of backed up on videos is, well... I have no computer <laughs> uh, some issues happen and I had to bring my computer in and I'm still waiting for them to uh, fix it they've been backlogged pretty bad so yeah I have all that going to where my computer is so that way when I run lock the lock program I run it from my computer my computer is plugged into the USB port which is connected to the lock programmer on this side of the layout and uh, I can program my trains download files and whatnot so yeah, so going forward, what's gonna end up happening, this is will be where I program all my trains uh, before I put them onto the layout. Uh, I just think it'd be a lot easier that way, as well as accessories uh, that I need to. Um, that's something that I'm definitely gonna be doing. All right, so on this side of the layout, which is the more completed side, what I did over here was I actually uh, reconnected all the lights, which put a huge smile on my face. It's been years since I've seen this. Yeah, that's, uh, it definitely changes the look on everything. We have lights there in the building. Right there at the, the door. Same thing with uh, that little building there. I didn't put a light there. And then we have lights there for the street lights. And also the one thing too is the traffic light for the switch. So as you can see, it's red. That traffic light is actually for the line where the Union Pacific is on. So that's to indicate that the switch is closed. Then after when I throw the switch, it turns green and tells him that he can proceed. So I finally got all that rewired back up. So it looks really cool. The layout is pretty much put back together and it's running really well. I've had the trains going around and uh, for the most part without <laughs> any issues, major issues I should say. There's always going to be some issues. I've, I'm relearning on which cars are problematic uh, and which ones are very temperamental. You guys in the hobby for long enough or even for a couple of years, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There are always going to be specific cars that no matter how hard you try, they just don't want to cooperate and they just they're they're a pain in the butt is what it is <laughs> but uh yeah so i'm learning on the combination of cars and i'll give an example right here for my coal cars for whatever reason i cannot connect my coal cars to any of the the locomotives because when i do for whatever reason they are very temperamental they hop off the tracks in random spots around the layout it can be in the middle of a turn or crossing over a switch or just even going along in a straight area it's yeah it's one of those but if i add this blue car in between no problems 
no problems whatsoever. And the same thing with this Cottle uh, stackable rack for the containers uh, on this train, on this uh, Dash 8, same thing. So I ended up putting a box car that works perfect and I haven't had any issues of derailing. So it's just, it's just one of those things where I'm learning on what cars can go where in the combinations. Why it's like this, it's beyond me, but it is what it is and I'm just trying to go with the flow type of thing. All right, so for this longest time, I've been manually throwing these switches. Uh, this is the line that goes into the coal mine, so that way we can get coal to bring it to the power plant. So this is the main line on this side. Uh, like I said, I've been doing that as a manual throw. I wanna add three tortoise switch machines, which is gonna be one, two, and then this one right here, number three. Um, this one will be good for when I store my trains in here or if I want to do some switching with the box cars or even with the coal porters. It'll be all digital, which is going to be really nice. It looks like I already pre-drilled this area, which is a massive hole. Uh, so the other one is this one here, which I did not. This is going to be fun, but uh, this will be a good thing to show everybody that you can still upgrade your layout as you grow right so and that's the more important thing so and that'll be all on the same ds64 that's running the passenger line all right so enough of that let's get those tortoise switch machines put in right there all right so good news for me i guess when i uh, initially put the the install the layout or installed the switch i actually drilled a hole <laughs> right through right through the plywood this is definitely going to make uh, my job a whole lot easier. Yep, there it is. Okay, work can commence. Super excited for this one. All right. All right, a couple of things that I did was uh, bent the piano wire out that I needed to for the, the switch motors. That's already installed. And then also made uh, three more of these. So that way it's just a uh, plug and play type of thing. So I didn't record that because I've done it before. I'll leave uh, a link down at the end of the video of how I did these. And um, honestly, wiring, it's not exactly the most fun thing to do, <laughs> but that's one of the necessary things to do in this hobby, right? So uh, yeah, I didn't want to put you through that torture. Anyways, let's get ready uh, to install the switch machines. All right, now that we installed the, the piano wire in here, uh, there's you one more thing that we got to do to make this um, work very smoothly with the tortoise switch machines so this is still snappy and that's because there's a little tiny spring that's set inside right in here Let's see if we can get a little closer uh, I guess the camera yeah the camera's picking up just a little tiny piece right there and then one right inside that slot right there uh, so the idea is you want to take that out so it's not snappy and it's pretty straightforward just grab that out and gently take it out there it is so do that for the others and then that's how you get it nice and smooth it's not snappy there it goes that can give a little bit more tension. It's it's okay. I'm gonna add a little bit of tension. The way that we're gonna add tension here is I'll show you quickly. So we have the switch motor here, and then we have this little tiny piece that we ended up putting on. Um, the wire comes up out of here, goes in through there, and what you want to do is to adjust the throw. Of the of the piano wire if you want very minimal you want to bring this all the way up to the very top Which will give the throw a very short uh, swing uh, Think of it as a lever This is the uh, pivot point and this is the movement point the closer you get to the the actual movement further The the piano wire is going to swing right so here. There's a piano wire right here if we're just gonna go you can see more or less on how that throws. You wanna have the throw a lot bigger, then you bring this down, 
Now, what ends up happening is that it needs to move a lot less, but the throw is a lot bigger, as you can see. And what this will do is this will add tension on the, the blades or on the turnout, which will keep the blades closed nicely, giving it that tension so that way there's no chance of any derailment. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna push this down on that turnout. See, already you can see a huge difference. There's a lot more tension there, which is nice. Now, I just wanna, I just wanna let you guys know on something here. If you are new to the hobby and you're doing the the servo motors, and you're using piano wires, let's say you ended up getting yourselves a nice pair of uh, precision cut side cutters. Do not use them on the piano wire. The piano wire will destroy them. These are very much destroyed. You can see the holes that it left. So the piano wires are, are hardened steel and this stuff is not hard enough to cut it. Get yourself a pair of utility ones. Um, this is a monkey grip. I don't know if anybody knows this uh, this brand. But uh, yeah, these side cutters that I have, uh, these, these do a really good job and they don't get damaged. So we'll get trim this down a little bit lower than level. Oh, be careful because these things fly, man. And when you cut these piano wires, make sure your eyes, you're wearing safety glasses or you keep your face away. Because when you cut them, man, like these things, they fly and they go all over the place. All right, right now what we're going to do is we're going to get the UP train over here with the coal hoppers. And uh, we're going to get him to go pick up some coal so that way he can uh, drop off the coal to the power plant. All right, UP is requesting to enter a coal mine. Request is granted. P906, you are clear of the gantry. 